Welcome back, everyone. It is Ryan with the Idaho Crypto Group here today with Binance Basics lesson number three, going over how to send and receive cryptocurrencies to and from Binance. So um, if you haven't already watched part one and two, in part one, we show you guys how to set up your Binance account and navigate the basic interface of the exchange. And in the last video, we went over the advanced trading interface where we went over trade pairs, time frames, and candlestick charts. I did say in the last video that the next video was going to be going over orders and how to place them, but actually, I think it is important to understand um, how your Binance Binance wallet works and how to send and receive crypto to and from Binance. So we're going to be going over that today. If you already know how to do that stuff, this video might not be very helpful. But if you are looking to learn how to send and receive crypto on your Binance account, then uh, make sure to watch the whole video. So let's get right into it. If you don't already have a Binance US account set up and keep in mind, if you're not from the United States, you're somewhere in another foreign country, you are totally able to use the regular Binance, you'll just have to make sure to check with your country and state to make sure you're using the proper exchange. Um, but anyways, if you don't have a Binance US account set up, you can go to our website, idahocryptogroup.com and hit open a Binance account sign up now and if you guys do that it will sign you up using our referral code and then after you complete $100 worth of trading within 30 days you'll get a free $10 and so will we so if you guys like these types of videos and want to continue supporting the Idaho Crypto Group please make sure to sign up using our referral code which will also be in a link in the description below um, so anyways here we are on the main page of our Binance account and if you want to get into your wallet page where you can send and receive crypto you're going to want to click this wallet tab right here now this is a little bit different from this main portfolio tab obviously here you can buy crypto and in the first video we showed you how to actually buy crypto using your uh, bank account or debit card which you can do right here but we're not talking about us dollars in this video we're talking about sending and receiving actual cryptocurrencies like i mentioned before usd is actual us dollars in your crypto account usdt is a is a cryptocurrency stable coin but usd is not a cryptocurrency it is literally just a us dollar balance in your account if you want to send and receive cryptocurrency you're going to need to go to this wallet page up here this little wallet tab click on that and then boom it's going to look like this like i said you can see right here the us dollars this is not cryptocurrency there is no point this is not going to fluctuate in value at all if you hold anything in us dollars now you could use us dollars as a tether as some people do but that's why i use usdt which is a cryptocurrency stable coin it's a lot easier and the fees are lower and you don't have to go back and forth between cash and crypto um, but anyways here is our wallet here you guys you can see we've got some bitcoin as well as some mana here now one thing you need to know before you start sending and receiving cryptocurrencies you need to understand what a cryptocurrency address is with every coin inside of your exchange wallet you're going to have a public address for each different coin now let me show you guys what i mean and i'm going to go here to bitcoin and if i hit this little menu button on the right side i can either deposit or withdraw okay so if i wanted to send bitcoin to this account i would want to be depositing bitcoin into the account so i would click deposit and it shows you the coin here and you can choose different networks but for now just use your basic bitcoin Bitcoin network if you were just going to be sending Bitcoin again you have the coin here now it's going to give you two things one it's going to give you this QR code right here in the middle and then down below this is what I mentioned this is called a public address so this is a string of characters and numbers and there's a reason that this is called a public address it's different from your private keys or your seed words you don't want to ever give those out because if anyone has your private keys or your seed words then they can get into your account or your wallet but this is a public address the only thing people can do with this string of letters and numbers here is send cryptocurrency to your wallet now you can either use this or if you scan this qr code all this qr code is is a qr code that corresponds to these letters and numbers so what do you do with this public address well like i said if i wanted to send bitcoin to this wallet i would need to send it from obviously another wallet or another exchange and i would need to type in the public address you can think of your public address like your your cash app username or your venmo username right when people are going to Venmo you or Cash App you or PayPal you money, you need to give them your username on that. Your public address is similar to that in that this is what you would give people if they were going to send you Bitcoin. Now, one thing you need to keep in mind, notice how this address starts with the 1FKW. If I went to a different type of coin on a different blockchain, for example, let's say I went to Mana and I wanted to deposit, you'll notice the address is going to be totally different. So that is one very, very important thing you need to keep in mind when you're using addresses is that you are sending the correct coin to the correct address. Now, one thing you'll notice is some coins do run on the same blockchain. So like my mana coin, for example, that public address right here, 0xAB, is going to be the same as my Ethereum address because they run on the same blockchain. See, if I open up my Ethereum address here, 
that's the same address that we just looked at earlier. But still, you always want to make sure and double and triple check that you are sending the correct coin to the correct address. And one thing you need to keep in mind too, like you saw earlier on Bitcoin, Bitcoin operates on different networks. So you need to make sure also that you are sending the coin on the same network. Um, but let me show you guys an example of how this would work. So on my phone here, I have got the Trust Wallet downloaded and I've got some Ethereum on this phone that I want to send to my Binance account. So let's say you bought some crypto from maybe a different exchange or you got some from a friend or you bought some from a crypto ATM and you want to send it to your Binance account to be able to start trading, staking or whatever you're going to do. So I've got the Trust Wallet on my phone and we have videos on our channel showing you guys how to set up wallets and kind of how they work before. Um, but I've got my Trust Wallet and I've got some Ethereum in here that I want to send to this account. So again, like I was saying, there's different chains. This is Ethereum native. I am just dealing with regular Ethereum today, okay? So what I want to do, if I want to deposit Ethereum into my Binance account from my trust wallet, I'm gonna go deposit and then it's going to give me my Ethereum public address. Now, there's a couple of ways that you can do this. And depending on where you're sending it from, the process might be a little bit different. But in today's case, I am on the Trust Wallet. And so as you can see, I've got my Ethereum right here and I have a few options. I can either send, receive, or swap it. But obviously, I want to send it from my Trust Wallet to my Binance account. So I'm going to click the Send button. Now, there's two things that it's going to ask you anytime you want to make a cryptocurrency transaction. It's going to ask you for the recipient address as well as the amount you want to send. So in this top box, recipient address, again, this is going to go back to your public address. The recipient address is where you want to send the crypto. So there's two things I can do here. I can either copy and paste this address into the recipient address. If you're going back and forth between apps on your phone, it might be easier to highlight, copy and paste, or you just click this little button here. This will also copy the address to your clipboard. So you can click copy here. Um, but if you're going back and forth like me from a phone to a wallet, um, you could either email yourself the, the address. You could telegram yourself the address. Um, telegram has a super neat feature where you can message yourself. So if you have multiple devices, you can send um, files, public addresses, photos, things like that back and forth. Um, so that's what I use. I'm going to send this address over to my phone on telegram real quick. I'm going to hit copy. Okay, so I just sent it and now you can hit the paste button and boom, as you can see there, the public address has now popped into my phone. Um, now, the second way you can do this is by using this QR code here. Not all wallets and apps and exchanges will have QR scanning functionability or maybe you're even working on a computer that doesn't have a camera on it so you won't be able to use the QR code. But you can do the same thing with your phone as you would any regular QR code when it's asking for the recipient address. So if I delete all this again, I can hit this little scan QR button and then I can scan the QR code there and boom, it's going to auto populate my address in there. Now, one thing that we always like to do here at the Idaho Crypto Group when you're sending or receiving cryptocurrency is after you paste the address or scan the QR code, I always double check the first four digits and the last four digits just to make sure that everything copy and pasted over properly. Because that's one thing about cryptocurrency. If you send cryptocurrency guys to the wrong address, Unless you know the person and they're going to be nice about it, and, and chances are you don't because if you're off by one letter or one number, it's going to a different address. And in 99% of cases, that crypto is completely unrecoverable. And that's the one thing you need to keep in mind about crypto is we are our own bank. So you are responsible for your own funds, your own cryptocurrency. So you want to double check that you are sending it to the right address. So like I was saying, I always double check the first four letters. Um, so as I can see here, I have zero X A B. As you can see on my phone, if I scroll over, that does correspond zero X A B. And then we will always check the last four as well. Six A seven eight. If I go all the way back to the end, I can see that the last four, six, a seven, eight does match up to my phone. So that is my recipient address coming from my trust wallet. Now, the next thing you need to do is you're going to need to type in the amount you want to send. And on trust wallet, it's nice. You can either choose the amount in the form of cryptocurrency or in the form of the US dollar equivalent. So right now it says ETH amount. So I could say like if I wanted to send two Ethereum, then it would send $2,500 to my Binance account. Um, if I click on the little ETH button over here, now it's swapped to US dollar amount. So if I wanted to send it, I could choose, let's say I wanted to send $300. Um, which is about, you can see below 0.235 Ethereum. So let's say I want to do that today. Let's send $300 in Ethereum. So again, I've got my public address and the amount I want to send. Now I'm going to hit next. And then usually it'll ask you for a confirmation. There is going to be a network fee when you send cryptocurrency. And one thing you need to keep in mind is there is always going to be network fees when you're sending or receiving cryptocurrency. Uh, but the good news is it's much better than sending stuff over like PayPal or Venmo where they take like 3% of your transaction. Cryptocurrency fees are generally very fee friendly. Um, 
Um, so again, this is just an overview of the transaction. It shows the amount of Ethereum I'm sending, the address I'm sending it to, as well as what the fee is and what the total will be. So I'm going to hit confirm now. And boom, now I can see that this is pending. One thing about the blockchain is that transactions have to go through a certain amount of network confirmations before they are approved and processed. So right now this transaction is pending. And one thing to also keep in mind when you're sending to or from um, exchanges versus wallets, trust wallet like I have on my phone is a wallet. Binance is an exchange. There is a big difference. Wallets, you actually own the private keys to that wallet. Binance. Technically, technically, if you're storing your money on Binance, Binance has control of those funds. Yes, you have control of the funds too. You can withdraw and, and deposit and all that sort of thing, but it's it's never a good idea to store cryptocurrency long-term on an exchange if you're really in it for the long run, because if Binance US gets into a lawsuit, if they get hacked, your funds could be susceptible to um, getting stolen. So this transaction is pending right now. And like I said, it might take a little longer uh, to send to an exchange. If you're sending from wallet to wallet, transaction times are gonna be much faster. If you're sending to or from an exchange, it could take a little bit longer. Um, I mean, and, and depending on what coin you have, um, some coins transact much faster. Bitcoin is one of the slower coins. Ethereum is usually a bit quicker, but I've seen Bitcoin transactions take hours before. So if you don't see anything, make sure you entered in your address right and just be patient and your funds should show up. So I'm going to go check my wallet now here on Binance. Now that we're done sending that off of my trust wallet go back to my wallet tab and hit refresh so as you can see I, i'm not seeing the ethereum yet and like i said don't freak out as long as you got the address in right it'll show up um, just give it a little bit of time you can go into your ethereum here oh look and we can already see that it is pending so it's just waiting for confirmations and if you click on it you can see right here two of 12 confirmations um, i got my 0.235 eth coming in and like i said it needs 12 confirmations it's got two and these are done by nodes in the network a little bit of an advanced topic again um, but you can see where where it came from as well as the transaction ID here and the network it was sent on. So I'm gonna go ahead and wait for this transaction to be approved and then I will be right back with you guys. Oh, I was just on my phone and I saw the money pop up. All right, so here we go. Now you can see my portfolio balance. I just got that $300 in Ethereum. As you can see here, um, like I mentioned, there was a fee taken out. And depending on, sometimes there can be a little bit of slippage. Some exchanges will have very small discrepancies in price when you go from exchange to exchange. So as you can see, I sent 300, um, but it came over as 297.97. Again, there was a network fee, but Ethereum could be listed worth a little bit less than it was on the trust wallet. But now I've got my Ethereum in here, as you can see. Um, you can see all of your different transactions you've had and it has been successful. It got all the confirmations it needs. So we now have Ethereum in our wallet. So that was just a quick example of how to deposit cryptocurrency into your wallet. Again, make sure that you're using the right address. It would be the same process if you wanted to do. Let's go. Um, where's where's our little Dogecoin here? There we go. Same thing here. If you wanted to send Dogecoin, you'd click on Dogecoin. You'd hit deposit. Copy and paste this address to yourself in an email or telegram, or if you're on the same phone, you can just copy and paste it into the other app or scan this QR code, select the amount, and then you will be good to deposit. Now, the process is very similar on how to send cryptocurrency out of Binance, so I'm going to show you guys how to do that real quick. Um, so I'm just going to send a little bit of the Ethereum back to the wallet just so I can show you guys how that works. So again, click these three dots over here and hit withdraw. Now, again, same thing here. Um, it's asking you which coin you want to withdraw. And let's say I wanted to withdraw 0 0.01. Oh, there's a minimum. There is usually a minimum on deposits and withdrawals. So the minimum would be 0 0.00238 Ethereum. And then here is where you would be inputting the recipient address. So again, if I wanted to send it from Binance back to my wallet, I would then need to go back onto my trust wallet here and I would need to hit receive this time because my trust wallet and my Binance wallet are completely separate. So they'll have different public addresses. Keep that in mind. Each app you're using will have different public addresses on each different coin. Um, so here is my receive address on trust wallet. So my public address for Ethereum, I would copy and paste it, send it to myself again on Telegram or or scan the code which i'll do real quick okay i'll paste that in here again i'm using the regular ethereum erc20 network uh oops i gotta paste that address again again always double check your first four zero x zero a go all the way to the end 
nine F twenty nine. Yes, so it matches up. I can hit preview withdrawal, and then it's going to show you the fee again. If you're sending a small amount of crypto, sometimes it's not really worth it. Like as you can see here, I'm trying to send three dollars, but the estimated withdrawal fee is going to be a dollar forty eight. So a lot of times, if you're sending small chunks of crypto, it, it kind of doesn't make a whole lot of sense because you're going to pay big fees. But anyways, if I wanted to send this three dollars, I'm going to hit confirm withdrawal, and then usually if you have your two factor authentication set up, it's going to go ahead and text you a code here on my other phone and then boom it's going to say an email with a confirmation was just sent to you please click on the link in the email to confirm the withdrawal so this is just kind of binance's way of making sure that like if someone got into your account or somehow guessed your password that they're not just like withdrawing all your crypto and that it's actually you so i'm gonna to have to go to my email real quick and approve that withdrawal so i will do that really quick so here is what that withdrawal email looked like. It's saying you've made an application to withdraw this amount of Ethereum to this address. So if you want, here's another spot you can double check again, make sure it's the right amount, go into the right address, and then go ahead and hit confirm withdrawal. And then boom, it's gonna take you here, withdrawal order submitted go to wallet again we're going to be waiting for confirmation so it's not going to happen right away if you're using like tron or like smaller coins sometimes it goes much quicker but like i said um, exchanges do tend to take a little bit longer just because they do um, have to go through a couple extra steps of verification so if i go in here to ethereum again i can see the transaction history i can see that this one is pending the withdrawal that we just did the amount we sent um, still waiting for its 12 confirmations and shows the address it was sent to as well as the fee so pretty simple and straight to the point today, guys, just showing you how to send or receive crypto to and from Binance. Again, you can send from Binance to Trust Wallet. You can send from Binance to Coinbase. You can send from Binance to um, Gemini. You can send from exchange to exchange, all sorts of things. The biggest things you need to pay attention to is that you're sending the right amount of crypto to the right address. So don't send Bitcoin to an Ethereum address. Don't send Tron to a Bitcoin address or you will get very, very lost and messed up very quickly. Make sure to just double and triple check those addresses. Never try to type in a public address by hand. Always use copy and paste because there's just so many errors you can make while typing in that long of a string of characters and numbers. So just play, pay very close attention. Like I mentioned earlier, you are responsible for your own funds in this case. So it's better to always just double check. So now I've taken you guys through how to set up a Binance account, how to read trade pairs, timeframes, and candlestick charts, and also how to send and receive crypto to and from Binance. So our next video is going to be the exciting part where we actually get into trading. I'm going to be showing you guys how to place limit, market, and stop limit orders, and how to read the order book chart. So that will be a good video. So if you guys have any questions about today's video or anything else crypto related, please make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you learned anything from this video, leave a like, make sure to subscribe so you can catch our future videos. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.